Praise God, praise God. Can we give the Lord some more praise? Amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all doing good? Amen. Praise God. You guys looking good. You guys believe that? Yes. <laughs> Mike, we don't believe it by the end of the night. I, I promise you that. Because God is good. God is faithful. And guess what, y'all? Even though we may not believe it, but God is always on time. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. Now, his timing may not be our timing, but God's timing is perfect. And he's never slacking, even though we think he may be slacking, right? Yeah. I want to let you know God is not slacking. And how we kind of talked about uh, this, the last Bible study, we had talked about, even though it seemed like God may not be working, I want to, to confirm with you guys that God is working. Yeah. Only because we don't see it doesn't mean he's not working. But I want to let you know, whatever you need, and you've been praying for God, you're inviting God into your situation, into your circumstances, I want to let you know that God is moving for you. Amen. See, because God is faithful. He loves his children. He loves his people. And each and, one of you, each and every one of you guys are God's children. And he loves you that much that he's going to see you through the promises. Amen? I don't know if you guys remember when we had talked about why God even give us promises, but God give us promises when we go through that desert and it give us some type of hope that we're going to make it through. Amen? Amen? Yes. Things may seem so bleak, right? It may seem like a gaping hole of darkness. I don't have no type of hope, but there are 7,000 promises written in the Bible just for you. And I say this all the time. See, the Bible, our relationship with God, is not private. But it's personal. Amen? Yes, amen. So what I want to do, I want to talk about something real quick. Guys. I want to talk about fighting discouragement. Because I mean, you guys know it's easier to start something than it is to finish it. Whether it's a, a fitness goal. Yeah. Whether it's school. Whether it's work. Or how about your Christian walk? Right? I mean, it was easy to start it. You was on fire for God, right? Yeah. You was casting out devils left and right. <laughs> and from point A to point B, and somewhere in between, you got discouraged. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to read with you guys, and I believe you guys can get a lot of correlations, and you guys can pull a lot out of this scripture. It's a book of uh, Nehemiah. We can turn there real quick. Uh, we're going to just use this portion of scripture, because there's so many things. It's so deep, uh, and I believe it, you guys can relate to it. Like Pastor Abel was saying, you know, when you come expecting from God, God is going to give you something. Amen? Amen. And I hope you guys came expecting from God because God wants to give you something here. He, want, he wants you to leave with hope, with some joy. He don't want you to leave crusty. He don't want you to leave ashy. He don't want to leave you unhappy. He wants you to leave with God's goodness filled in you, right? Because I mean, you guys know, through this thing we call life, things come up. Things that we don't even plan to come up, right? You may have a beautiful day. You may have had a good day at work. You didn't have to cuss nobody out, praise God. Birds is chirping right, Sister Lynette. 70 degrees weather is perfect weather, but for whatever reason, you decided to speed on your way home, and now you got a, park, uh, a speeding ticket. Is that you, Sister Lynette? I feel the spirit. <laughs> your day may be going perfect. It may be going the way you want it, but for whatever reason, you got some type of news, some discouraging news, and it just messed you all up. Now, how many of you guys can say amen? amen. It may be somebody in here that feels discouraged in the mug right now. You're discouraged. And you probably wonder, Brother Bernie's man, tell me something good, because I don't know if I can continue to fight. I only got one Pop-Tart in my cabinet, and I just don't know where my next meal is going to come from. I'm very discouraged, Brother Ernest. Can you help a brother out? Well, thank God for the Word of God, because I believe the Word of God can help you out. So Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, chapter 12. And now I want to give you guys a, a little history of this before I read this scripture. Now Nehemiah was a mighty man of God. He was actually a very important man of Israel, but he was actually under the uh, captivity of Persia at the time. And the city of uh, yeah, the, the city of Jerusalem was being rebuilt at this time. Uh, he had asked the king that was over him if he can go to the city. Where, where, where he lived before the captivity to help go rebuild the wall. Now the king said, you're good, go ahead, do what you got to do. Right? So uh, Nehemiah, and this is where the scripture uh, is going to start you know, picking up from. Nehemiah went to uh, Jerusalem. He went to Israel. He went 
to go rebuild the wall. Because I mean, you know, back then, if you didn't have a wall around your city, what good is your city? See, the wall, it, it played a very important part back then. Because if you didn't have a wall around your city, anything can just come in and destroy the integrity of the city. Whether it's wild, dirty animals, whether it's the neighboring cities that want to come in and, and captivate your people or start destroying and start taking things, it's a lot of things that can go down when you didn't have a wall around your city. Now, Nehemiah knew the importance of not having a wall around his city. He knew the integrity was, 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 was what's that word I'm looking for? The integrity was up in the air because there was no wall around the city. So he asked the king to go, and this is where we're at. So he goes there, he starts building the wall, he, he gets some mighty man, they start half building the wall. Now look at this opposition. Now you guys can relate to this. I promise you that you could. It says, at last the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city, for the people had worked with enthusiasm. But when uh, uh, Sambalat and, and Tobiah and the Arabs, the Ammonites and the Ashidites, heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem was being repaired, they was furious. Now these are the neighboring cities. They was mad that Jerusalem was building these walls back up. They, they was having a good time going in and taking whatever they needed. So they didn't want that wall up. They all made plans to come and fight against and, and, and to protect Oh no, I'm so sorry. Verse 8, it says, they all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us and threw us in, in confusion. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night uh, to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to move. It's so much trash. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying before they, they know what's happening, we will swoop down. And kill them and end their work. The Jews who lived there near the enemy came and told us again and again, and they would come from all directions to attack us. Now, see, what ended up happening was, here they was rebuilding the walls, doing what God wanted them to do, and then they faced some opposition. Now, who is in this place know how that feels? When God is calling you to build a work, whether it's build your family, whether it's build your testimony, you got a new job? What if it's something like that? But now some opposition is just coming your way. You know people just love to talk, right? People love to talk about you. And, 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 and unfortunately, it's not going to stop until the day you die. People are always going to talk about you to the day you die. But sometimes when people talk, it can be very discouraging, right? Especially when they start saying stuff like, I'm going to kill you. Now this is what Nehemiah faced. They said, if they continue to build that wall, we're going to go in and do something, and we're going to kill them. Now, the people got discouraged. They didn't want to build the wall. They said, look, I don't know I don't know about you guys, but this wall is taking a little long, right? Look at all this trash. I mean, we're not even really complete yet, and the enemies is going to kill us for even completing the wall. Now, how many of you guys can feel what they're talking about? The devil loves to lie when you are completing God's work. Amen. The devil loves to lie when you are just on the verge of, of being blessed, the devil just loved to lie to you. And because it corresponds with how we're feeling, we kind of believe it, right? Because we kind of feel kind of scared about it because it's kind of unsure, and the devil comes, see, he, he, cause, because he's a dirty opportunist, he comes to see that he can play with your emotions, and you start kind of believing it, right? I want to look at the word uh, discouraged real quick, because we even seen a word that had this word in the definition. It says, the, the, the word uh, discouragement it means this. It says, cause someone to lose confidence or enthusiasm. Discourage me to lose confidence or, dis, uh, or enthusiasm. See, once you was once joyful, you was once enthusiastic about your ministry. You was once confident about your ministry. You was once confident and enthusiastic about your family being rebuilt. About that new job, now you think it's a curse. Praise the Lord. The kids, you was once confident about that. You was enthusiastic about it, but now they get on your nerves. You was confident and you was enthusiastic about the blessings that God was going to bestow on you, right? But now you feel like the blessings are taking way too long. I don't want to wait, Lord. Now, do you guys know what it means to be patient? 
What, what is, do, you, do you think you know what it means? Because, you know, when I, when I hear the word patient, I, patient, I always thought it just meant to wait on something, right? But the word patience actually means to wait with a good attitude. That's what patience means. So when I tell God, look, God, you need to hurry up on this because I, I don't know how long I'm doing, I can do this for. What I'm really showing is arrogance. What I'm really showing is, God, look, I am this important. I need it now. God, forget your timing. Hey, look, my timing is better. Lord, give it to me now. Amen? But see, that's just showing arrogance on our part. I want to let you know, guys, look, it, nothing beats God's timing. Nothing beats God's timing. See, I was pulled out of a dark place, all messed up, thought I knew what love was. I thought I knew what friendship was, what family was. But I didn't know my mind was all screwed up from the enemy lies, from things that happened to me when I was a boy. Living on the streets with my mom, my mom been a drug addict. See, I didn't know all that stuff messed with my mentality. I didn't know I was operating out of God's realm of what love was. I had a twisted view of love. A messed up mindset, but God rescued me out of that. Now, if he can rescue me out of it, he can rescue anybody out of it. See, a mindset, you, you feel kind of scared. Like, I, I don't know how can I break this. I don't know how I can leave church and, and stop listening to this early music. But I want to let you know, God can do it. Amen. God can make things cold turkey for you. Easy. With a snap of a finger, God can turn some things around for you. Amen? Y'all believe that? Amen. So I, I don't want to take up too much time. So I'm going to go through a few points with you. Just give me a few more minutes. And I got your hair. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I want to look at something. I want to look at four common causes of discouragement. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys know it's more than four causes of discouragement, but these are the four we're going to cover today. And I said one earlier, how about when things just don't go your way, right? When things are going perfectly as planned, and for whatever reason, a wrench just get thrown into your day. Like that, like that speeding ticket, right, Lynette? <laughs> Look, I see I can relate, Lynette, because I had parking tickets where I didn't feel like I needed a darn parking ticket and it just ruined my whole day. Right? Or when you go to KFC and they don't have no more chicken. What what in the world is that? You had a good day, right? What, what what's going on with that? Things just ain't adding up. Everything was going good. My family was doing good, and then you get this phone call talking about you had a family member in a car accident. It's it's ugly. Right? But this is part of life. These are things that we're going to go through, right? These are things that's going to happen. See, the Bible says that the rain fall on the just and the unjust. See, when you have these times, these times of trial, you got to know how to handle it because it's going to happen. But see, sometimes God lets you go through these things so he can build you up, have you rooted where he needs you to be rooted. Because if you're not rooted and that blessing pours out on you, guess what? You're going to just fumble the ball. We're not strong enough to carry the blessing that God has for us. So God got to put us on a spiritual workout so we can carry that blessing. Amen. See, that blessing is not for you right now because you're not strong enough to carry it right now. So if you're discouraged and you're wondering why God, why have I not had this prayer answered? But just realize that God is doing something in you first. See, the Bible says that in order for him to change the outside of your circumstances, he got to change your inside first. He got to change your inside first. So it's some messed up things in some of us. We know that, right? I'll be the first one to admit I got some messed up things. And I know God won't bless me until some of those messed up things are, you know, burn out, right? Some of y'all got some messed up things. But thank God that God is gracious. He loves you. And he's patient enough to have those things burned out of you so he can pour out blessings on you. Amen? Amen. So don't get discouraged when things ain't going your way. Just know that God always got a plan. Amen? God always got a plan. Give the Lord some praise for that. God always got a plan for everything you're going through, even though you may not believe it. It's a plan. It's a plan. Thank God. How about this? Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 18. I'm about to read this next scripture. Um, 
But here's my next point before I even read that. Here's another way that we get discouraged, uh, a very common way, when something takes a little longer than we expect it to take, right? When something takes a little longer than we expect it to take, when it took a little longer for you to get that job that you wanted, right? It took a little longer than you expect. And what happens when it, it takes a little long? You get tired, right? And then you let your flesh rise up, and then you start basing your decisions off your flesh. I heard a song, and it, it blessed my heart, because what he said was so true. He said, he said, he said the broke man, he was so tired, and this is in jest. It, it says something in between his lines. It says, the broke man was broke for so long, he became the dope man. And what, it, what it's saying is, this guy was broke for so long, he was broke for so long, Things was not looking right for him for so long that he decided to make a fleshly move and he starts selling drugs so he can get out of it from the bottom. And sometimes we can do stuff like that. Now, it may not be as extreme as selling drugs, but it's to some type of degree that we do something stupid because we're tired of waiting on God. Amen? We do something kind of stupid out of our flesh. It's not of God. It's not part of God's plan. And we just mess things up. How many of you guys know we mess things up a lot? Because we get so tired waiting on the Lord. But I want to let you know, look, it ain't nothing that we could do that can match what God could do for us. And what God got in store for you is better than anything you could have a dream of. That business idea that you have in your head that's been in there for so long, God want to prosper it. He want to make it physical. He want to make it tangible. He want it out and about. He want it manifest so you can be blessed, your family can be blessed, and your whole church can be blessed. Your whole circle won't be blessed. Amen? Amen? But see, we can't do that outside of God. Our stupid ideas will never get us that far. It's only God who can prosper our ideas like that and make them bigger than what we can ever have dreamed of. So in just wait on God, it may take long, but you remember what I just said? God is doing something in you. God is doing something in you. That's why the process is a little long. It's some things that got to be burned out of that old man. Uh -oh. It's some nasty, nasty, nasty yeah. things that got to be burned out. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you know it ain't going to feel good when God got burned it out. It may even hurt a little. But praise God, it should hurt. Burn it out. See, I, you know what? I grew up in, with my grandma. And thank God my grandma knew a lot about tough love. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> I remember she let me sleep in my little kid-sized bed for the longest until I got a, uncomfortable enough to buy my own mattress. Uh -uh. <laughs> I had to make some adult moves, right? Uh -uh. See, God will let you get uncomfortable enough so you can start moving. Yes. Because some of us are a little too stagnant. Oh, Lord. We can be a little too stagnant. Wow. We, 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 we do the same old things. We routine. Oh. We're, we're people of habit. But God will let you get uncomfortable enough so you can move oh, and shake Lord. off those chains. Praise yes. God. See, now God wants you uncomfortable so you can shake off those chains and you can go to the next season of your life. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. Yes. Y'all with me? Amen. I didn't lose y'all yet, right? Nope. No. But praise God. Praise God. Here's another reason why we get discouraged. I'm almost finished, Pastor Ray, I promise. Uh -huh. We are not properly rested. Uh -oh. Now, this is so practical that it don't even make sense, right? Or practically rested. But how many of you guys know when you're tired, you're not the best you? Yes. Nobody want to be around you when you're tired. Oh. You know it. Your mama don't want to be around you when you're tired. Right, Lynette? You, you People don't want to be around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ain't the best you when you're tired. And when you're tired, you off your game. You ain't watching when the enemy comes. Oh, Lord. Right, when, Peter, when Jesus was, was, was praying and the disciples fell asleep, they didn't see the enemy come up. They were asleep. See, when you're sleeping, when you're not well rested, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, you're not the best you. And so you're more subjected to assaults from the enemy. You're not on your A game. You're not on your A game. So that's why I want, and look, guys, and this is why the Sabbath is part of the Ten Commandments. It's that important for you. Take some time off. Please, praise the Lord, take some time off. Because when you come up in the church and you got that crusty attitude, nobody want to be around you. You're just affecting the whole church. Yeah. And a new visitor come in and they just feel it automatically. I want to let you guys know God 
is your true resting place. Yes. See, God can give you true rest in the middle of a storm. Amen. So whatever you may be going through, because you probably believe in how can I get rest? I got so many things going on. I want to let you know that God can give you true rest. He can give you true rest no matter what the circumstances is, no matter how high the waves are, no matter how loud the waves roar, that God can give you rest and all that. Because you know why? Because God got it. There's no problem too big for God, and there's no problem too small for God. See, what concerns you is what concerns God. Don't let people tell you your problem is too big or too small for God. Because if it's bothering you, it bothers God. God is that personal. He's that, he's that entwined with us. Yes. Amen? Amen? So God is taking your problems just as serious as you taking them. But God got you. God is going to see you through. That's yes. faithful. That's how, God faith, uh, how faithful God is. Yes. Amen. Okay, how about this? Here's another reason why we get discouraged. When something is a little more complicated than we thought it would be. Mm. Right? Well, I didn't know I had to wake up an hour early to get to church to clean, to be an usher. Oh, this is a little more complicated than I thought. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know I actually had to cook for my husband. Woo, Lord, say it again. Do his laundry too? Well, this is again. a little complicated than I thought. Say it again. Wait, you, wait, you, you serious? I got to actually go to, to go to work and provide for my family? Woo. Oh, this is a little more complicated uh -huh. than say I thought. Say it again. Right? Sometimes it don't, it don't matter what it is. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Whether it's your job, whether it's, like I said, whether it's a fitness goal. Think about it. Sometimes we, we get to a place and it, it's a little more complicated than I thought it would be. So we get kind of discouraged and we kind of veer off, right? Have anybody, do anybody know what I'm talking about? When things is a little more complicated, when it has a little more levels than I thought it was, I get discouraged. I want to let you know what helps that. Praying helps that. Praying will put things in perspective for you quick. Talking to someone who is hurting put things in perspective for you quick. See, the Bible teaches us all of that. And when, when things are complicated, we get frustrated, right? Yes. We, we get this, 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 this ugliness that comes over us. Look in the book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10. It says, there is so much trash, we cannot rebuild this wall. Remember we read that? It was so much trash, I was so frustrated with all the trash that they had that it became this complicated progress or uh, process. They said, you know what? We just can't do that. Forget it. Forget it. So how much is clustering your mind today? How much trash is in your mind where you feel like you can't complete the object God got you yeah. or the objective that God got you on, right? Yeah. You need to clear your mind, clear all that trash out your head. Because it's until you clear out all the trash, you will have a clarity of mind, a peace of mind. And like I said, God can take all that stuff away from you, and we're going to leave it on the altar today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You guys are too good. <laughs> Here's another one. When I start to doubt my own ability, right? Yeah. When you start to doubt yourself. And this is like a crack in your armor. Because as soon as you start doubting yourself, that's when the enemy comes in and starts manipulating things. Yes. Right. Yeah. This is when the, 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 the deception becomes so real in your life because you start doubting. Yeah. You don't believe you can do it. Yeah. And when you don't believe you can do it, you won't walk in it. Yeah. If I don't believe that I'm a real child of God, I'm not going to walk as I'm a real child of God. Yeah. If I don't believe I can provide for my family, I won't walk as I can provide for my family. If I don't believe I got the victory, I won't walk in victory. If I don't believe my kids will ever get saved, I will never pray for them to get saved. Amen? So this is why it's important to believe what you believe. Because it's when you believe is when you're going to start making movements. Amen? Yes. It's, 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 you got to start believing this stuff. Because it's when you believe you're going to start making steps. Amen? That's right. And I want to let you guys know, if, 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 if you guys didn't know this by now, if you guys didn't know this before you walked through this door, you can do it. Amen. Because the sell you short is the sell God short. Yes. The Bible says that he gave you the Holy Spirit. Soon as you gave your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit, the God just deposited the Holy Spirit within you. Yes. Amen. So the sell you short is to sell God short. Because the Bible says that he, his power is made perfect in our weakness. That's right. So whatever, whatever area we're weak in, God will show out. He will show up and show out. Yes. And I, and I got testimonies of that. And I'm pretty sure all of you guys got testimonies of that. So keep that in mind. Amen? Amen. 
All right, let's keep going. And, uh, okay, so, so you, well, we good so far, right? Yes. Because I'm about to close it off, and I know I took a little longer than I was supposed to. So let's look up, or let's look at the cure of discouragement, okay? And we kind of talked about this. How about reorganizing whatever is not working, right? Hmm. Putting things back in perspective. Taking a step back. Sometimes we got to take a step back, right? Call a timeout. You need a timeout. Yep. You need to put things back in perspective. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 13 uh, through 14 says, So I stationed armed guards. Now look at his battle plan. How many of you guys know you need a battle plan before you yes. go into the battle? Yes. The Bible says, So I stationed armed guards at the most vulnerable places of the wall and assigned people. By families with their swords, uh, lances and bows. After looking things over, I stood up and spoke at the nobles and officials and everyone else. Don't be afraid of them. Put your mind on the masters, on the master, great and awesome. And to fight for your brothers, your son, your daughters, and your wives and your homes. Reorganize what is not working for you. And I want to say this. Remember what you're doing it for. Remember what you're doing it for. Remember why you're fighting. Because you know you got some unsaved family members. That's why you're fighting. You got some kids and some, some, some daughters and some sons that's not saved. Remember what you're fighting for. Yes. You got to remember what you're fighting for. Because yes. when you remember what you're fighting for, that's how you stay motivated. That's right. Praise God. Remember why you're doing this. Because it's easy to, to get discouraged to come to church and you see a skeleton crew here. Whew. It's easy. And then that's when you got to remember, why am I even here, Lord? Why, why are you doing this? Why are you stepping in faith? Re remind yourself, why are you doing it? Why are you going to work? Why are you doing everything you have to do for your kids? Why? Why? Remind yourself that. I promise you guys, that will put things in perspective. Praise the Lord. And when you are, where you are weak, know where you are weak. And where you are strong, know where you are strong. And pray for those things. Amen? Number two, refocus on God. We focus on God. Get your mind off the problem. Because the more you look at the problem, the bigger that problem is. The more, and that problem may even be kind of small, but because you're so focused on it, it just looks so big, right? When you're so close to it, it just looks super big. But when you stand back, you can see how big it really is. See, you know, I, God shared this with me, and I forgot who was talking to me. I think it was Sister Veronica about David didn't see the size of Goliath. Yep. He didn't see the size of Goliath. See, look, when you're so uh, drenched in God, you see you see things how God intended you to see them. Yes. See, and I believe that David didn't see how big Goliath was because he seen something else. He knew that he was uncircumcised, meaning he didn't have the covering of the Lord. Yep. And because he didn't have the covering of the Lord, he didn't see Goliath big at all. He seen him very small. Yep. Because he knew his God was big. Amen. So he's seen Goliath how God seen him. That fool ain't going to be here talking all that mess. Uh -uh, I ain't about to do all that. Yeah. Talking about my daddy. He won't let somebody talk about your daddy, your mama. Nobody going to let you talk about <laughs> but you are, You won't be fighting. David was tired of that fool talking about his daddy all the time. He said, uh, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Give me that armor. I'm about to go ahead and take care of this fuck myself. You know what? That armor don't even fit. I'm good. I got God's covering. Amen. Uh, yeah. You got God's covering. Yes. Hey, shake off that old armor. That that things that people try to put on you to go fight with. You can't fit that stuff anymore. God deliver you from all that junk. You can't fit it anymore. But see, God got a special tailor-made armor just for you. Just for you. Just for you. That's right. For every new battle is a new armor. Praise God. For every new battle, Mike, there's a new armor. It's a new game plan. It's a new battle plan that you gotta follow. For the new battle. But I want to let you know God will give you those things. Yes. God will give you those things. He don't leave you off to just a wonder and how you want to get through it. See, God will give you all those things. When you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, yes. that, God will give you those things. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, Sister Jay, God will give you some things. Yes. Some good things that you would never have thought of. Yes. Praise God. See, amen. God is that good, y'all. Yes. Amen. Last point. Pastor, I'm, I'm done right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. This is easier said than done, and it's, it's very common sense. Resist the discouragement. 
Oh. When that discouragement come your way, just learn how to fight. Yeah. See, you remember how I said earlier, I said God will let you go through some things? Mm -hmm. So you can be rooted and, and booted and the, and the things of God is to strengthen you. But see, God will let you fight off some things so you know that you could fight. Yeah. Right? So you, so you know you can fight. So you know that you can pray like a warrior that you are. So you got to go through some things to know that you can pray like that. You got to go through some things to know that you can pray in the spirit like that. I'm about to close up right now, Nick. I see Nick is going like this. But Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. I'm about, to, I'm about to give it to you, Justin, right now. Look what it says in Nehemiah. Fight for your friends, your families, and your homes. Discouragement, discourage, discourage, oh Lord, I'm discouragement, discouragement yeah. is a choice. Yes. Amen? You can choose to be discouraged. You can yeah. be, choose to be happy. You can choose to trust in God. Each and every day is a choice, y'all. Y'all believe that? Yeah. So when we wake up tomorrow, what are we going to choose? We're going to choose to be happy, right? We ain't going to choose to think about anything yeah. discouragement, right, sister? Yeah. Yes, amen. There we go, Sister Monique. So with that being said, praise God. Sister Monique going to be happy. If it wasn't for anybody else, Sister Monique going to be happy. So with that being said, I'm going to call our brother Justin. Give him all